Oh, man. How y'all doing? Whew, I, ju I just barely made it. The, the beeper just went off on my microwave. Still, he still heating up my coffee, getting my coffee ready. Jeez, man. Tell him. I hope you guys' day has gone as, as smooth when you guys are all organized and ready to do your thing. You just kind of crept off. I was like, I'm thinking I've got the time to go ahead and do whatever it is I need to do. I'm like studying my notes and stuff like that and reading this verse and things like that. I'm like, oh, snap. You know, love boat playing in the background, distracting me and stuff. It's just on. I said, not like I'm not like I watch it or anything like that. It's just, it's just it's just on. You know, sometimes I get tired of like flipping through channels and stuff like that. I just have to stop where it is. Yeah. They'd be like, shut up. So you know, you'd be liking to watch me TV and stuff like that. Isn't that the channel that has Columbo on it? You'll be watching that later while you're having your cheeseburger, right? It's like, so yeah, yeah, you were watching the Love Boat. So I'm, look, okay, you know, so what? Would you judge me? Let me refresh my page real quick. Right. Judge, judge not, judge not thee who watches Love Boat. I wasn't watching it. It's just on. To explain myself. Quiet woman. Bring me my coffee. Please. <laughs> Please. Two speak two two sugars in it. Two sugars. No. <laughs> what that really means is that I want you to blow a kiss in it, honey. Right. <laughs> right. Alright, where are we at? Twelve. Okay, so we're, we're uh, let me see, we got through a little bit of 12. 12 was a little long, man. Be here all night going through 12. So uh, we've been going in through it in sections, loop 12. And uh, so where are we at? We are at, uh, we're getting ready to jump into, let me see, where the corn am I jumping into for loop 12? 12, 13. 12, 13. All right, thank you. I don't know, I don't know where I would be without that woman telling me what that's right. <laughs> My Jesus job. <laughs> Brought to me by a, a groovy chick. Oh, thank you. Baby. Don't be jealous. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hi, let's. Hi, Belle Mitchell. <laughs> What's up, y'all? What is up? Okay, let's see. Let's see what we can do with it today. Okay. All right, so we are at uh, twelve, Luke twelve thirteen, and which is going to say, uh, someone from the crowd said to him, "A hey, teacher." Tell my <laughs> tell my brother, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. It's like, man, Jesus, like, hey, you snitch. <laughs> Jesus, like, looking at it's like, you a snitch, man. When you gonna come over here and you, and you gonna come to me and you want me to help you to, to like, you want me to like get on your side and help and tell your brother to divvy up the inheritance? Okay, so now and, and just and looking right there. Okay, so we go from thirteen to fourteen. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher. Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. All right, so I'm looking at that, and I'm like, your bro you want your brother to divide? So is it is it, is the is the inheritance your brother's? Is it belong to him? Was he like you know? Is he your older brother? Was uh, was he supposed to get the first dibs on the inheritance? Uh, is your brother being greedy, and you're gonna have to seek uh, litigation to get your to get your half? Um, or are you? Is or are you being greedy? Did you do anything to earn inheritance? Did you? Did you like? Did you do something or not do enough to uh, even get the inheritance? And it all just went to your brother, and you're gonna and you want to go ahead and seek legal recourse or whatever to, to to get your to get your cut. Is that what's going on? So Jesus is kind of like looking at him. You know, it's like what's what 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 motivation are you coming to me with this? And matter of fact, why are you coming to me with this? How come you didn't seek? Uh, you know, why are you seeking me for arbitration? Well, how, how is it that I'm going to be appointed to this? And it's almost like a rhetorical question because that's what Jesus says to him. He says, friend, man, man, he said to him, who appointed me to be judge or arbitrator over you? And it's like, I think it's, it's, it's like I speak, I feel Jesus, I feel Jesus, I feel it, I feel it in spirit. Okay, let me rephrase that, I read, I read. Considering the things that we have, you know, as we've been reading together, as we've been reading the, the, the characteristics of Jesus, so like one of the things that Jesus wants to do is like he wants it to register to them that, dude, I'm God. That's the, this is, this is the, now, like I said, we've read this quite plenty, right? Yeah. It's like, are you getting the picture that I am God? So it's like when he asks him, that, it's like he's asking him a rhetorical question. He says, my man, who appointed me as judge or arbitrator over you? Yeah, you're coming to me to be this magistrate. Why? Why is that? Why didn't you go? Why didn't you take this up with somebody else? 
Why are you taking it up with me? And the thing is, and as the as the person as the arbitrator, of this it's like you're, the, the the key word here is divide the inheritance. So you want me to divvy up this inheritance for y'all, and I think it's an interesting choice for you to come to me because you know what I am the divider. Jesus said, "I don't come to bring peace; I come to bring the sword." Now, when G when this guy is coming with that, it's like, yeah, you you're coming to the right place. You are barking up the wrong tree, but you're kind of barking up the wrong. The, you're barking up the right tree. I'm sorry, you're barking up the right tree, but you're barking up it for the wrong reasons. What is your motivation here, and what what do you want with this stuff? Why why is it that um, you and your brothers can't settle your differences. Yeah, which uh, one of you is greedy? Yeah, it's like which one of y'all is greedy? Why can't you settle your difference? Where you go and you you want to go right to arbitration? You want you want to go ahead you want to go ahead and do this? It's like have you not read the history, man, of, of this of this rivalry between right. brothers? Right. Have you? This doesn't go well. It didn't go good for Cain and Abel. It didn't go good for Jacob and Esau. Right. It's like you, you guys are you, there's somehow you guys are uh, there's there's covetousness there's pride. Uh, there's envy, uh, you know, all these things are, are, are playing in the middle. And, and, and if you know anything about it, if you know anything about uh, the history, man, this doesn't go good. So your 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 motivations are already wrong here. So Jesus is kind of like looking at him sideways, man. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a much bigger picture going on here, son. Yeah. And uh, so he tells him, <clears throat> Franny said, who appointed me a judge or arbitrator over you. And like I said, the, 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 the rhetor it's a rhetorical question because the answer is, dude, you got to know that it's God who appoints me. That's the why. That's what, that's why I think it's interesting that you came to me. You didn't go to somebody else. Yeah. You came to me. Right. Now, some will say that, you know, this is a point of Jesus not wanting to get sidetracked uh, because Jesus is uh, his... His basically is, is uh, his objective is a spiritual concern. His his objective is is the kingdom only. But even in dealing with this, is still a spiritual concern. Mm -hmm. So even Jesus is you is using this opportunity to say, look, man, there is something greater going on here. If you look at the history, it's going to be a spiritual concern. If you look at what's uh, going on in your contemporary, it's still going to be a spiritual concern of how this is going to be resolved. Uh, so now, Brandy said to him. Who appointed me judge, arbitrator, or and then he said to him, then he said to them, watch out and be on guard against all greed. Now listen to that. Watch out and be on guard against all greed because one's life is not in the abundance of his possessions. So like I said, when Jesus is bringing this stuff up, remember I said he's talking about sibling rivalry and stuff like that. If you listen to the cadence of that, it's reflective of what was said to Cain. Jesus says to him, watch out and be on guard against all greed, uh, uh, etc. And then what was said to Cain, watch out. Sin is crouching at your door, yeah. but you must master it. So Jesus is reflecting. He's bringing, he's bringing that back into it also. Um, so let's see. And then from there, he's going to tell them, uh, and we're going to reflect on that You know, uh, later on. We're going to come back to this. Uh, at least I hope I remember too. <laughs> That's why I have you guys here to help remind me. Say, hey, study right, Zo. You're forgetting stuff. <laughs> huh. Okay. Stay on track. <clears throat> Stay on track. <laughs> Eat your greens. <laughs> All right. Um, because one's life is not in the abundance of his possessions. Then he told them a parable. A rich man's land was very productive. Uh, so his soil produced that good nooch, right? <laughs> he thought to himself... Here's what I should do. Since I don't have anywhere to store my crops, and let's see, he's going off in this parable, and it's, it's par this parable is coming out of him. He's giving an illustration to this guy. And it's about greed, and it's about um, you know um, really not being right-minded with your possessions and stuff like that, and you know what your motivation is for wealth, and what do you want to do once you've uh, you know ascertained what it is that you want. Uh, so Jesus wants to help put this in proper perspective for him, you know, just so you can think about it. It's like, look, man, if you want this stuff, you want to go head to head with your brother to get this stuff. What motivates you for it? Is your motivation even right to do it with? You know, uh, so Jesus is going to like, you know, kind of, you know, school him in this. So uh, a rich man's land is very productive. He thought to himself, what should I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? Cops try to stash my crops. <laughs> Can't stand that song, man. Anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway um, 
I will do this, he said. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. It's like right here. It's like, okay, so we, uh, he's, he's one of these uh, people who would be stigmatized as one of them hoarders, right? <laughs> You're hoarding wealth. You're hoarding materials and, and resources and stuff like that. People don't like that sort of stuff. And, uh, and this is where the collective is. Be like, see, see, Jesus is a collectivist like us. He doesn't like that stuff either. Yep, you yep. <laughs> know. The Bible does seem to lend to that now, doesn't it? Yeah. Not when you put Jesus in full biblical context, it don't. If you take this verse by verse, you can go ahead and try to make, if you like uh, take these like cherry pick verses and things like that, you can go ahead and try to make Jesus out to be this uh, uh, collectivist or some um, model for your socialist utopia. Uh, but it really, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, let's see. And, and we're going we're gonna to read why. Okay, so now. Uh, he said, I'll tear down my barns, build bigger ones. Uh, and so let me say, take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. All right. Now, this is why this doesn't work. No, nope, actually, actually, let me read a little bit more. He says, let me go ahead and read this whole up, up through 21. But God said to him, you fool, you fool. This very night, your life is demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? That's how it is with the one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Okay, so what Jesus is saying is that, look, man, you can be rich all you want. I don't care if you're rich. Right. The problem is, is that you're, fool you're foolish with your wealth. Mm -hmm. You're going to, let's say, you're going to go ahead and amass this wealth and you're going to take your possessions or your assets and stuff like that, and you're going to put them in here. You're going to build up a bar and you store up stuff for yourself. So, man, you would make a sucky uh, Joseph. Joseph didn't do that. When Joseph stored up stuff, why did he store up stuff? He stored it up to be a blessing to people. He was a blessing. You're not storing up stuff to be a blessing. You're storing up stuff to be selfish. And your stuff, and let me tell you something, man, your stuff is going to rot. That's what's going to happen to yeah. it. It's, you know, your, your possessions, man, what, what are you doing with them? And, and the thing is, like, this is, what, this is like, uh, this seems, is this not speaking to our generation or what? Because that's what we want to do. Isn't that what we want to do? You got a whole bunch of people, like especially these millennials, man, man. They want, I just, I, I keep repeating this irony, you know, but what do millennials want to do? They want to go to school for free. They want to go to school <laughs> for free so they can get this awesome paying job. We want an awesome paying job for stuff that we want for free. They want, you know, it's like, why do you want to make so much money just so everything can be like made to you for, to be right. free for you? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. They, so they, 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 this is what they want, and they want this high paying job so so they can do what? You want to go ahead and you want to make a whole bunch of money so you can just go ahead and sip margaritas on the beach. That's what you want to do. You, you're like the, the so-called American dream to you is basically be able to make a whole bunch of money so you can keep up with the Joneses and uh, uh, you can go ahead and, and retire at freaking 35 is what you want to do. Yeah. And Jesus says now, so for those who are saying that Jesus is their model collectivist, Jesus says that this is foolish. You mm -hmm. fool. That's interesting, yeah. That you want to you wanna make all this money just so you can retire so you can kick back and jesus is like no because one of the if, 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 let's go back to the commandments the commandment isn't just so you rest on sunday or the sabbath you know uh uh and you guys go ahead and argue all you <laughs> whichever whichever day the sabbath is uh but that's not the point the point is is that it's not about you resting on one day of the week the commandment is also for six days shall you work right and as long as you have any capacity to work that's what you're gonna do you work Jesus is like, once you, once you store it up, when you got your stuff stored up in your houses, what you need to do is find enough stuff to wait and make that stuff work for you. Make it work. <laughs> That's what Jesus is saying. He said, you want to put this stuff in the storehouse for what? You got possession? Jesus don't care if you're wealthy, but, what he, but he's, his concern is, is how is your wealth a blessing to anybody right. else? What's the point? It's like, really, what's the point of being wealthy if you ain't got... And, and the thing is, man, you see these people and they're miserable, man. They're miserable. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus, like, and, you know, like, like I said, because basically what this is talking about is, is looking like retirement. 
And I tell you what, man, if you're not being productive, if you're not offering some sort of service, if you're not applying yourself to something that, that facilitates somebody's uh, need, you know, whether it's a product or a service like that, you're going to be miserable. And it don't matter if, uh, it ain't going to matter if you're poor and it ain't going to matter if you're rich. It ain't going to matter. If you're poor and you're unemployed, you're going to be worried and you're going to be stressed and you're, gonna, you're, just, you're, you're not going to be comfortable. You're not going to be in a good place. Yeah. If you're rich and you're not working and you've retired, a lot of people that retire and they're going out of their minds, man. They, mm -hmm. they, have, they have to work. They have to do something. All they have to provide yeah. a service. All they do is chase around ways to entertain themselves. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's retirement. <laughs> and, you know, and, 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 it's, and, it, and it eats them up. Yeah. It does. You know, when they start to feel more, it's like people be talking how they're looking forward to retirement, looking forward to retirement, and then they get it, and they're not fulfilled. <laughs> yeah. They're not fulfilled. They got to start drinking. And yeah. Stuff. It's like, you know, they're, they're just not at peace. You know, so, and it's like, you know, they're, they're just one. It's like, man, I got to get back into this, what I do. Yeah. You know, and if they can't do it is what it is that they have done, if they can't do that anymore, they often get really depressed. Yeah. Because it's like they've done what it is that they do. It's like, man, I don't, I don't know anything else. I don't, yeah. I don't know. A lot of us can picture our grandparents upon mm -hmm. retiring that depression sets in. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, now they don't have a purpose that they feel like. Yeah. So, you're, you, you know, and Jesus is like saying, so you're a fool if you just think, if you think that you're going to store up a bunch of stuff and you just, and, and you got these possessions and you're just going to be like, you know, chilling and, and clubbing and, and sitting. It's like, no, nah, man, you're going you're gonna to decay. <laughs> Yeah. You're you're a fool. You're gonna squander everything that you have. Um, you got to keep your stuff working for you. You got to keep it working. So, uh, but let's let's recap also. Uh, but God said to him, "You fool! This very night, your life is demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be?" So let's say this dude gives up the ghost tonight. You had all these possessions, and now your possessions, they mean nothing. You can't take this stuff with you. Mm -hmm. You haven't made this stuff work for you. And then it's like, and not only that, he's saying, whose will they be? Well, it's not going to be yours anymore. Right. You got all this stuff. Good for you. It's not yours anymore. Your life, your, you, 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 didn't, you, you didn't gave up the ghost. And now this stuff, mm -hmm. you fool, belongs to the state. <laughs> so for, for the collectivists who love that death tax... Jesus yeah. says that this is foolishness. You haven't used this stuff to bless anybody with. And, Je and now the collectivists are going to say that, well, isn't it a blessing that the state has uh, taken it so that they can redis uh, uh, redistribute it? It's like, no, that's foolishness. Uh, and we're going to see why in just a second. Uh, so then it says, doo -doo 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 -doo. now look here. We're going to go into, it's going to go into another topic, but it's, gonna, it's gonna, still going to relate to uh, what we were just talking about. Uh, then he said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or about the body. Now, this is this is a strange thing for Jesus to be talking about. Um, it's like, OK, don't worry about my life. Uh, well, Jesus, man, I got I got bills and stuff like that. Uh, you know, rent is due. Uh, kid, the kids need uh, uh, braces and, and 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 stuff like that. And I'm trying to put money away for them for college and things like. What, what do you mean I shouldn't worry? Mm. Shouldn't I be worried? Uh, and Jesus saying, uh, what you will eat or about your body and stuff like that. It's like, okay, well, you know, I'm uh, uh, you know living from paycheck to paycheck, and you know the, the 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 cost of living is going up, and the economy is going down, and, and uh, it's like God. How? Sh what, what do you mean? Don't worry. Do you want me to be nonchalant? Do you want me to be indifferent to these things that are going on? And God be like, look, man, don't be putting words in my mouth. That's not what I told you. I didn't tell you to, to not have a healthy concern. Mm, right. I didn't tell you to not be conscious of what's going on. I told you to not worry. There's a huge difference. Wor worry is unhealthy concern. Worry takes up a whole lot of energy. You're going to spend this, all this energy going around in circles of fear, worrying about what you're going to do yeah. when you need. If you're going to go have something to go around in circles, you're going to need to put them tires to the road and get out there and do something about it instead of worrying. The guy's like, yeah. look, worrying ain't going to go do nothing for you. That's of the devil. Yeah, it's true. Worrying is for the devil. So I tell you, don't worry about your life. Doesn't mean that you don't value your life. 
It doesn't mean that you ha that you that you shouldn't be motivated and put things in a proper perspective and have proper concern about what you're gonna do. I don't want you to be apathetic or indifferent or anything like that or nonchalant or cavalier about what's going on. I'm just saying don't worry, because that ain't gonna help you. Um, what you will eat, and that's, just, that's weird how funny it says what you will eat or about the body. So it's like, what, are you, what is Jesus talking about there? Is he talking about what you will eat? And you would think it'd be like, it would really drive the point home of like when you're gonna eat. It's like, you know, it's like, man, I'm hungry. I don't, I don't know when my next meal is coming. But Jesus is talking about what you will eat and about the body. And we see today people have gotten like really legalistic about what they're eating. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of in, in, in the market. It's a lot of fear mongering about food. I've been guilty of being you know? legalistic. <laughs> people, it's like, and, but that's the thing, y'all. Listen, and, and I think I think this is really key about about uh, to, uh, for today. Um what you will eat or about the body. People out there be talking about Monsanto and, and GMOs and pesticides and all the and all the things that we have to do uh, or the things to be concerned with about what's in our food and you can't pronounce this in your food. If you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't be eating it. And there's all the <laughs> people all the time, you know, uh, uh, heightening our anxieties about what we eat. And the Bible has basically told us about how to, you know, uh, uh, have good... Um, have a good crop in a, 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 a for the market of food. You know, this is how you do that. But right now, we didn't we didn't gone way off the deep end in how we do our food and stuff like that. You can't do nothing right. Can't do anything right if if you try to have food that that's organic and doesn't have all these preservatives and stuff like that. Well, it's going to have a low shelf life and it's going to be really expensive. And then people are going to complain. Or on the other odd end of it, you can go ahead and have these foods that do have preservatives in it and it has a higher shelf life and it's going to be lower in cost and people are still going to complain. Yeah. So now, so God is saying because, and, and this is the result, because people have made it a business to make, and, and, and whether it's a, a, a professional business or whether it's just between people, what we do is we get out there and we make a, a, a big issue about food. And what ends up happening? This ends up because of these uh, anxieties between people, it ends up becoming instituted. Now we got regulations all over the place to, quell, to, to, to supposedly quell people's anxieties about their food. So because of that, we got all these regulations on food. And, and it's like there's nothing you can do to make food like quality control. And I'm not saying that we should. But the problem is, is because of all the fear... Now, that takes power away from the free market. The free market is the best judge of quality. Right. We, if, if, if it was left to the free market, we would regulate, we would be well regulated yeah. ourselves. But because of the fear that people put out there and always trying to bony finger somebody else who's trying to make a living and stuff like that, then they want the state to do something about it. And when the state yeah. gets involved and starts imposing all these regulations, fees and taxes and all that sort of stuff, then the price of food goes up. And then from there, the people who, who produce the food, what they got to do from there is like they got to offset these, these prices. So now that's when the corner cutting really starts. Yep. It's like, dang, man, what are we going to do to make sure that, 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 that customers are still going to want to buy our food? We're going to have to answer to all these regulations, but now we're going to have to like uh, uh, make substitutions and, and stuff like that to try to make the bulk of the food go a little bit further. Yeah. You know, that's and so that's when you start getting into these these unhealthy ingredients well, and all the these preservatives. Full of hormones, so they produce more. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's what you end up getting. Yeah. Because of worry. Gosh, yeah. Worry gets instituted, y'all, and politicians play on this. Yeah, that's true. Before you know, and then you get two things. You either get really expensive food or you get straight up junk food. You get food that's, well, I'm just hungry and I just need to eat something. And the, the affordable food is just food that's a, a bunch of empty calories and freaking is, is a recipe for diabetes. Yeah, that's exactly. what you end up with. Yeah. Because of fear, worry. This plays out today. Uh, so let's see. Mike Prater says the liberals put us there. You know what I'm saying? You know? That's why we're reading this day so we can, so we can push it back. <laughs> We getting our healthy diet, getting our, eating our soul food right now, eating our soul food. 
so we can, you know, kind of help to stave off. You know, we're not going to do it perfect, man. We're not going to do it perfect. Our job is preserved, man. Our job is to be salty and see if we can, you know, get right back on track with what they're doing. Because that's what people do, man. It's like, you know, a lot of the fear mongering, you know, when it comes to food, you know, it, it's liberals crack me up. They want everybody to eat healthy. They want everybody to eat healthy and stuff like that. But they make it where people can't afford it. You know? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, eat organic and eat, uh, eat, uh, Eat this and eat that. It's better for you and whatnot. It's like, well, they not better for my wallet. I can't afford that. Well, but you know, that's that's liberalism for you. It's a self-eating snake. Okay. <laughs> um. So let's see. Then he says to this. Okay, I read that. So John, quit reading wait, the same verse over wait, and over. John Patrick Schultz said again with the food. <laughs> He's always gonna go back to food. You always go back to the food. <laughs> 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 All right. Hey, Jesus said, eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was about that food, too. Man. All right. Oh, man. Hey, but, but did I, have I said A or right yet? <laughs> I always trade one thing that I just keep forgetting. That I keep oh, repeating. I have to pay attention to what your thing is today. Honey. You're supposed to be paying attention anyway. <laughs> no, what your thing is today, if it's A or A. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thing today? Okay. All right. So, and also, now notice that he's, and it's interesting because he says, or about the what you will eat, or about the body, what you will wear. Hmm, it's like, yeah. okay, so is, is Jesus like, what are you talking about, man? Is, is, is he talking about um, just being able to be clothed, you know, so you'd be warm? Or are you talking about uh, just trying to keep up with the latest fashion? It's like, man, why? You, it's like, you, you had to go and get you some, some, some new Nikes, right? You, had, you just had to. You know you can't really afford that, but you just had to go and get them, right? <laughs> but because why? Because you're worried about appearances. You're worried. Why is it that people want to have like, you know, these, these, uh, they got to have the latest fashion. They got to have the latest threads and stuff like ego. that. You know, ego. That's what it's about. And these people, and the funny thing is, you know, regardless of how they be dressed or whatever it is that they do and, and to try to stylize themselves and stuff like that, what do they always say? I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what they like. I'm going to do this. I'm representing me. And I don't care what anybody thinks. Yes, you do. <laughs> you totally do. That's why you're doing it. Yeah. Okay. If you're going ahead and you want to make yourself look, and don't get me wrong, man, I, I I'm, I'm cool with people like making sure that they look good and stuff like that. Uh, you know, but just just for what reason? Right. You know, is is it? Are you trying to cover up something? You know, trying to cover up some insecurity, trying to floss because you want people. Good tennis shoes at Walmart. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, no, oh no, she didn't. No, she didn't. I ain't trying to like go around with a tag. I like to leave the tag on my shoes, but I want that tag to say Walmart. I want that tag to say like Macy's or something. Or I don't know. You know, but but because of these things, I mean, we end up becoming very shallow. Yeah. You know, very shallow people. Because Jesus, is like, man, you guys put your concerns. You know, is you're not supposed to worry at all. But your concerns, you know, even your concerns are just, you know, they're 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 shallow. They're empty. They they there's no not really any redeeming value to it. Um, for life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. So and now, once again, this isn't Jesus downplaying the need for food, and he's not downplaying the need to clothe oneself. That's not what he's saying. He doesn't want you to be indifferent or 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 treat this stuff as a uh, you know, passe or whatever. Um, he's just simply saying, don't worry. Be happy. Do, 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 Please do, don't. Do. <laughs> so, you jerk, why are you going to put that song in my head, man? Tony Torres says, Walmart tennies? No. Nope. <laughs> Come on, man. Leave Walmart alone, man. I like going through Walmart. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Okay, now, okay, now I'm tripping on this. Okay, so now we get to 24, and people are like, finally. I said, let's see. <laughs> I done read, I done read 13, what is it, 12? I done read 12 six times already, Zo, while you sit up there chewing on, on verse 23. Come on, man, get to the next verse, for corn's sake. Okay, now, so it says, consider the ravens, um, they don't sow or reap. It's a lazy bird, man. All right, they don't sow or it's a smart bird. It's yeah, some really smart, lazy people. Yeah. Right? We, yeah. Do we not see that today? There's a whole true. bunch of smart. The, the raven is, a, is, is I, that's why I say it's interesting that he chooses the raven. Raven is a really smart animal. Like considered to be like the smartest, like one of the smartest animals. But it's kind of like pointed out to be a pretty lazy animal. It don't sow. It don't reap. It don't store up nothing. 
It, a matter of fact, it lives off of it's a it's like a leech. It lives off of other things. Kills like oh, it's, <laughs> Raven be like chilling. Bah, bah. You gonna finish that? Yeah. You gonna eat your cornbread? You gonna <laughs> you done with that? Um, thank you for killing it for me. I'll be down there in a minute. Uh, so it's like that's the kind of thing that Raven is, and a Raven is kind of like you know a lot of these people today. They want to be so stuck with information. They 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 want to be so smart. They want to be so smart. But it's like really, what do you do with it though? What do you do with your intelligence? Where's your application, man? Where's the application that, that demonstrates that you are really a, a, a contributor to society that is, that is offering a good product or service as opposed to being a person who just likes to get out there and boast in how smart they are? You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, yeah. we got a lot of that. And so this raven uh, is, is, in, is implemented in Jesus' parable. I just think it's interesting. Like of all the animals that you could have used, it's like why are you gonna use a raven? Yeah. Because, and, and and the thing about a raven is, and because I mean, what the thing about the, this illustration is that God is saying, I still provide, I still provide for the raven. Well, what does the raven feed on? What is it that you provide for the raven that gives it its food? Death. The raven feeds on death. Yeah. It's a scavenger. So. I'm like, okay, God, this is an interesting animal that you're going to use for your illustration here. Hmm. So, um, so now it says, and they don't have a storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than the birds? Okay, so basically it's like God saying, it's like, look, man, you got this animal out there that's a scavenger. It feeds on death. It's smart, but it doesn't really do a lot of work. But you know what? In God's grace, I still look out for them. You were created in my image. You know, you have to know that I'm going to take good care of you. Oh, yeah. So now, so he goes on to say, now, can any of you add a cubit to his height by worrying? And that's the, the key thing here. It's like, don't worry. Worrying ain't going to do you no bit of good. It's not going to do you anything. That's really the bottom line of what's going on here. Because worry, because a person who worries, hold on one second, let me finish up this. Thing. If then you're not able to do even a little thing, like what I've described, why worry about the rest? See, y'all, the thing is, man, worry, when you worry, you're going to make irrational decisions. Worry, when you, when you make your moves, when you convict yourself to do things based on worry, you don't screw things up. That's true. You don't make decisions, you don't make executions based on worry. And not only that, y'all, worry is a corrosive agent that will separate you from God. You keep worrying all the time. You're going to worry yourself out of your relationship with God. Preach it, honey. Don't That's do it. Good. Yeah. Don't do it. Because it That's will good. be. It will be an irrational decision. Because um, people are still, when they start to let worry set in, it's like, God, where are you when I need you? God, why do you allow this to happen? God, aren't you, are, are you even real? Are you listening? Before you know it, you, 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 you've fallen out. You you become you know if, if uh or even if you never believed in God, you can worry yourself even further away from. Him. It's like you know uh I just I just don't want to have anything to do with a God that that lets people starve to death. It's like I'm looking at the word here and it's talking about uh, God will provide for the raven. And he says if He provides for the raven, He'll provide for you. It's like well, what about all the starving children in Africa and, and what about the starving kids in Haiti or or in, in the South Pacific and and people in our homeland that are hungry and go to bed you know at night and they don't have anything to eat. So God, what according to your word, um. I'm not seeing where you're living up to. And that's when worry starts to take over because you're looking at that and you're looking at even your own life and you feel like you're not fulfilled. And it's like, I don't think that God has provided me. I don't think God even listens to me. Wow. So how do you square up with this? How do you square up with this, God? Now, this is going to sound kind of cruel, uh, but I am going somewhere with this. I'm making a point because when people are talking about, you know, well, how is it? That there's death in the world. How is it that you know people starve to death? How is it? How is it that there's you know uh, there's suffering and and, uh, and and whatnot? Well, God even says here that He even looks out for the raven. See, in our world, y'all, death lives here, and unfortunately, death is part of the cycle of life here. And God says, yeah, I even look out for the raven. In my mercy, I'll leave it because the raven feeds on death. It takes something to die in order for, it, for, for the life cycle of the raven, even the raven. 
So even in death, I still facilitate life. I use that even for the perpetuation of life on your cursed planet. Mm, right. That's what I do. Now, some people may see that cruel as I know. That's me and my mercy. I didn't plan this for you. Right. You took it upon yourselves to make the world the way that it is. I'm trying to make the best of the situation that y'all done screwed up. So I will even provide for the raven. I will provide something that feeds on death. So, and God is like saying, but God is saying in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things, I am the one who ends all of this sort of stuff. I feed the raven because every one of you, every one of you, every organism, even humankind who's at the top of the food chain, who at the top of the food chain, every one of you ultimately becomes food for something else. Your death will help to sustain the life of something else because that's what your world is. I will bring the day that ends all of that. And see, you're only looking at your time on earth in the grand scheme of things. I am the one who ends hunger. I'm the one who ends all of that sort of stuff. Now, when people be saying, well, how come you know God is, is letting people starve to death and whatnot? It's like, no, no, no. Why are you letting that happen? Why do you let it happen? Right. Jesus didn't already put, he done already stepped on the scene and proved. It's like, look, man, I'm going to do this today. And then I'm going to do this forever. So mm -hmm. Jesus shows up just to prove it. It's like, look, man, I'm going to prove to you guys. What do you got? What's your concerns? Disease? Bam. I cure disease. You ain't got a king who can do that. But I can. Amen. Blindness? Bam. You can see now. Deafness? Bam. You can hear now. You hungry? Sit down. I'm going to give you guys some bread and fish out of nowhere. Jesus, God had already proven that he can do that. He can feed the multitudes. He can cure the multitudes. He's proven it. He was nailed to a cross for it. But even when he was nailed to a cross for it, it's like, look, man, this is me. As I said before, I am signing it in blood that the day is going to come where all these things will be gone. It's like C.S. Lewis said. C.S. Lewis basically saying, uh... If you have a need for something, if you feel a need, that means that there is something to facilitate your need. Okay? So when CS, it's like, uh, let me put it like this. You feel the need to breathe. Why do you feel, and, and you feel the need to breathe because there is air to facilitate that need. Mm. If you feel the need for something, that's because something exists, right? I feel hungry. Well, that's, that, well there's food that exists. To, to, uh, uh, to end your hunger for that time. And also, y'all, we feel the need for peace. Not just peace, but everlasting peace. We want peace. Well, you know what? You can't feel the need. Excuse me. I almost sound like a battery gen. I was like, near. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get the coffee. <laughs> uh, that's me trying to talk and burp at the same time. Okay. <laughs> if you feel the need for peace, well, the reason why you feel the need for peace is because there is the, uh, uh, there, there, that need. There is the one who can facilitate that need. His name is Jesus. Amen. He is the one who's going to bring the war to end all wars. Actually, he's not going to bring the wars. The wars, they're going to try to bring a war to him. And Jesus is going to be like, <laughs> you know, just, like, just blow that out. going to blow that out. All right. So, um, but yes, we want peace. We want, why, why do we want famine to end? If you have the desire to want famine to end, then that means there has to be something to facilitate that need where there's famine no more. If we, if, if it's, and, and not only that, guys, we have the desire to live in perfect health forever. Nobody wants to die. Nobody is. We, 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 want, to, we want to be healthy. We want to be strong. We want to have the body to fit into these clothes that we'd be worried about that Jesus is talking about and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> it, now, None of us, and, and the thing is, Jesus then came to give the demonstration that he can do this. He did it. He proved it. He's the only one who can do it. Right. And y'all, he's given us 2,000 plus years to do better. So when people be talking about, you know, how come your God doesn't do this? How come he doesn't do that? He did it. He didn't done it already. One guy. No, that's true. Yeah. One guy shows up and he does it. And then you got... A bunch of people out there, you know, like these Hollywood actors and stuff like you with millions of dollars. <laughs> Collectively, they got billions of dollars and yes. stuff like that, right? Hundreds what have you yeah, what have you done to end world hunger? You hadn't even put a dent in it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hey, you can't stop. It's like you're lamenting over what it is that disease, you, famine, death. Right? You ain't stopped it. <laughs> you know, getting on TV and trying to make yourselves look like you're so much better people because you care and stuff like that. And you haven't you haven't really done anything to stop it. What put a band aid on it? You know, make a song called Band Aid. You know, whatever a group called Band Aid. You know, feed the world, let them know it's Christmas time. I don't know. I don't remember that? <laughs> so uh, you know, yeah. G- Jesus didn't prove it. It's like, look, man, I'm the dude who comes and 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 stops all that. And you guys have had two thousand plus years. This experiment has run all this time. You guys haven't done. You you guys have basically only done things to to help out with symptoms for disease. Uh, and 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 from there, you guys end up stigmatizing each other, uh, saying that nobody wants to cure disease. You demand that diseases get cured. But at the same time, you don't think that they can be because greed is involved. So all this stuff goes on, disease, hunger, wars. Oh, why do people do wars? Well, because it boosts their economies and stuff like that. Okay, well, we've been at war. The economy sucks. Yeah. So how has war helped our economy? All these things that people get, these irrational, worrisome theories that people put out there, uh, uh, you know, is, is, is to our peril. And we've had this experiment to show that we can do better, and, and we've not. We've only, we've only found better ways to screw ourselves up, is what we've done. So, in the grand scheme of things, God is like saying, I'm the dude who is going to bring you that world. The world that you have right now, it, it, it's going to have to have a reboot, y'all. It's going to yes. take a reboot. But if you cling to me... That world that you lament about, that, the, 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 the world that you say where you want peace, the, where, where, where every, every need is, is met and stuff like that, every right need, um, that's that, that world exists. I'm the dude who could take you there. I've gone to prepare a place for you. That's what he says. So it's like, why would Jesus say, if people are saying, why would Jesus say, look, man, every, all these things are provided for. They're all provided for. In the grand scheme of things, you think that right now, it's because you're going to see people who may die from disease. You may see people who do die from hunger. And you're saying, well, okay, well, God, I guess you dropped the ball because you said that you provide for these, and, and I'm seeing them die. And God's like, well, yeah, unfortunately, in your world, you know, everybody has to die from something. That's, and, you know, that's a sad thing to say. But I go to prepare a place for you that this stuff no longer exists. What's your cost of admission? You cling to me. You grab a hold of my, you grab a hold of me, and you hold on, and I will lead you into that place. Endure in faith unto death, which means that unfortunately, it's like God's not going back on His word. He's not going back on His word. It's like, yeah, unfortunately, there are certain things that may take the life of people. May it be disease, may it be violence, may it be. Uh, you know, hunger, unfortunately, you know, these things may end up making a claim on somebody's life. That's our world. But God doesn't leave us there. And I know for some people that's like, oh, come on, Zoe, you're just trying to give like some sort of comfort talk about the afterlife that may, that probably doesn't exist and all that sort of stuff. It's like, y'all, look, once again, what has the non-believer or any other faith offered or philosophy offered? That has stopped these ails that we've had to experience in our world for thousands of years. There isn't. Once again, Jesus is the guy who showed up, who proved, he proved it, right? Disease, hunger, wars, death. He's the guy who sto- who shows up and says, "Yeah, not on my watch. So while I'm here, we ain't gonna have none of that. You come to me, you're gonna be cured of your diseases." You will see, you will hear, you will walk, Amen. you know, you will eat. So Jesus then proved it. And then he takes it even further and says, you will live. Even before he went to the cross, he was bringing people back from the dead. Yes. Then he goes on to the cross and then he raises up and says, not only will you, can you come back from the dead, death can never touch you again. You will live forever. And this is what Jesus has proven to do. And like I said, we've had 2,000 plus years to try to prove that we could do it ourselves. Okay. So Jesus, so God ain't lying. Well, let's see. Uh, let's take it from, then he says to him, you of little faith, don't keep striving for what you should eat 
and what you should drink. And don't be anxious. Don't be worried about this stuff. For the Gentile world eagerly seeks all these things. And your father knows that you need them. Okay, now we're going to backslide a little bit. Because we're going to be like, you have, let's say, you can have like this maybe like pantheistic view where, uh, you know, God is everything. He's not, he's not outside of everything looking in. He's, he's everything. And, uh, and because he's everything, um, he doesn't really, he's not really involved. He's already done. He's already done what he's going to do by, by being everything as it is. So he doesn't really have to uh, be involved with us, so to speak. And um, so in this right here, and if, and if God is like this impersonal, in this impersonal God, then at least I guess he would kind of have an excuse if he doesn't intervene in our lives. You know, yeah, he's just he's just God and, and he's, you know, he's to be revered in the sense of he's created everything. But don't ask him for nothing or don't pray to him or anything like that. You know, he's, he's you know, he's not going to answer you. <laughs> um, and you can never go be with him or anything like that. Um Let's see. But it, this says, and your father knows that you need him. Well, in a way, I reckon if I could play devil's advocate, that don't make me feel any better. Because that's like, okay, so God, you know of my predicament. You know what I'm going through. Struggling here. I'm struggling here. You know about it, uh, but you're not doing anything. Or you say, it's like, okay, you see God, you see people, you see little kids struggling with, with, with cancer and stuff like that. You see you see uh, kids that are hungry and whatnot. It's like, okay, well, God, what are you doing? I just, I, we, okay, we just read it. You know about it. Why aren't you doing something? So in that, it's like God's like, and I, you guys have heard me talk about this before. In that, look, your world is what it is. I didn't make that world for you. Your world has to play out. Right. It's just, it's just, that's what it is. This was not what I planned for you. This wasn't thy will be done. This was your will be done. Yep. My, my will, my laws, I guess people thought that I was just being too dang mean. Even angels in heaven rebelled against God because they didn't know how good they had it. They, just, they, they, they thought God was all mean and stuff. Yeah. You're born and flipping heaven. You have immortality. There's no disease. People like looking at this, like, God is so mean. Why would he make a world that had no disease? That, he did. Why, why, was, why would he make a world that has disease and hunger and stuff like that? Well, God actually did have the place, the realm, where there was none of that. There was no death. There was no death with, in, in his heavenly host. There was none of that. They, had, they were immortal. There was no disease. It wasn't good enough for them. They rebelled against God. And then you got Adam and Eve, born in grace, born with everything that a person could want, everything. God did make that world. In his grace, that's what he gave us up front. We didn't do nothing to deserve it. Nothing. And he gave us at up front and gave one rule. Don't eat from this tree. Think yeah. they followed it? No. So let's not accuse God of how mean he is because of the world that we have where children you know, die and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and women are oppressed and there's racism and all that sort of stuff. God warned us to this say, man, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. If you don't want a world like that, listen. It's going to take some guidelines. If you want to prevent that kind of world, this is the remedy, right? This is the formula. This is the rule. Well, we didn't follow that rule. And this is why we got what we got. And, then from the, and, and don't think that God is just going to abandon us. He's not. He obviously didn't because he went to the cross to reconcile us. So that, that day is coming where all these things that we complain about are going to end. But there has to be time, y'all. Unfortunately, it's going to take, take generations to understand this. It's going to come to a point where there's no excuse anymore to not, to, there's not going to be an excuse anymore to not understand that in our own reasoning, in our own intellect, in our own efforts, efforts that we can solve this. If you're, if you're of the scientific mind, how many experimentations do you have to run to find out that something don't work? <laughs> yeah. Jesus works. Yeah. He came. He proves. Like, look, this is what I do. It works. So, um, Jesus is not leaving us hanging. God is not some cruel God who's just sitting back and laughing while the earth is going through its torment. God gave us paradise up front. And we lost it. And then some people be like, well, Adam, no, Adam and Eve lost it. Really? Like we would have been any better? You don't think that any one of us, 
you know, that, that we would have been, that we would obey that rule. Right. You know, that's, I'm not, I'm not that full of myself, y'all. I know, look, in, in hindsight, we're looking at it, we're looking at it, and we're thinking, man, what idiots, man, I wouldn't eat from that tree. I don't think that was unreasonable. Man, you don't, but that, we can look at it in hindsight, hindsight is 2020. But when you're there at the time, and you got the, the persuasion yeah. of the anointed, of God's anointed cherub, smarter yep. than you. Yep. <laughs> is able to get out there and play on emotions that you had never helped that, that you hadn't even had time to 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 uh to, to register yet yeah. just shows up starts yeah. playing on your pride like that the mm. serpent struck quickly and that venom ran through their yes. veins fast poisoned all of us so not having that 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 weapon of hindsight you don't know what you would have gone into when yeah. god's anointed cherub shows up starts talking to you starts getting into your ear you don't know. True. John Reich said Adam and Eve ate us out of house and home. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll tell the jokes here, buddy. <laughs> we're, like, like, a good one. <laughs> we're like wins, oh, we win, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. For the Gentile eagerly <laughs> seeks season. But, okay, and right here, now this is going to substantiate what I've been saying. 31, but seek his kingdom. Mm. So all these things that we're seeking on earth, y'all, I'm not saying that we can't, that, we, that it doesn't come to pass. But even if it does, y'all, even if it does, let's understand this. It's temporal. Yeah. That's the thing about it. Hey, let's say you you go ahead and uh, as, you know God. Uh, okay, God. Uh, I want I want a refrigerator full of food. God's like, okay, there's your refrigerator full full, full of food. That ain't gonna last. God, I want to be I want I want to be cured uh, of my disease. Well, okay, that'd be a great thing to have, but it ain't gonna last. And when that runs out, you gonna be at God again. And if God didn't do anything, you'd be shaking your fist at him. That God, why aren't you doing this? Yeah. So God is letting you know, I need you to seek the kingdom. Because in the kingdom is where these things do last. They don't expire. They don't run out. Uh, so he says, um, and these things will be provided for you. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Uh oh, here come the collectivists. <laughs> see, see, God wants us to, he wants to, um, us to share the wealth and stuff like this. Okay, hold up, uh, pump your brakes, back up. <clears throat> God says sell your possessions, which means that this, this is your property to sell. Um, and also the, op also the opera we've heard uh, again is sell. S you don't sell your stuff. You don't sell the fruits of your labor to the government. The government takes it. Yes. So yep. this is, this is no, this is not charity. And this is you don't institute what 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 God is saying here. That's not what you do, but yeah. that's what people be trying to that's do. That's not charity. So when God is saying sell your possessions, it's like okay, so you want every rich person to go and sell their pos possessions to to for what? So they can be poor too. So if every rich person went and sold their stuff just so they could be poor, then where are going? Where are the rich people gonna? Then we're not gonna have any rich people to sell their stuff in the first place <laughs> to give to the poor, and everybody's just gonna be poor. That doesn't work. That's California, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, California. That it's like if you if you try to apply this from the collectivist mindset, you know, who all of a sudden want to borrow Jesus. <laughs> when it's convenient for them to assert their worldview, it doesn't work. When God is talking about selling possession, he's not talking about selling your livelihood. Right. It's yeah. two totally different things. Now, if you have a surplus of stuff that you're not doing with, yeah, allow somebody to glean your fields, man. You know, that's real charity. But once you put the state involved, it's not charity anymore. Please understand right. that for you collectivist-minded people out there. But yes, <clears throat> gleaning the field, that is definitely a, a biblical concept. You know, that, and that's a, that's a beautiful and wonderful thing to do. That you want to be able to, you know, because even when a person gleans the field, it means he's still got to come and get it. So, um, God is talking about uh, this, this stuff. Don't be afraid, little flock. Your father delights to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, give to the poor. Make money bags for yourselves that won't grow old. And inexhaustible treasure in heaven. 
where no thief comes near, the, like the government, the government won't be coming <laughs> to take your stuff. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, where no thief comes near. <laughs> See, you know, I'm being facetious, but seriously, like, where no thief is like, the government will not be coming yeah. to put their hand in your pocket. <laughs> where no thief comes near, no moth destroys. For there, your, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So now, this is interesting because, I mean, of course, you know, maybe Jesus is making illustrations. But he says, sell your possessions, give to the poor, make money bags for yourselves that won't grow old. He's talking about the treasure that you can store up in heaven. So it's like, wait a minute. So, God, are you suggesting that in heaven there's going to be currency? Huh. I mean, why would we store up treasures? I mean, you know, what kind of, you know, what's going on in heaven, guys, is, is most likely beyond, well, it is. It's beyond our understanding. But he's still using things in the natural to kind of give you a, ways that you can relate to what heaven would be like. That in heaven, you know, he's, he's given a sense of things that people value. And things that are, and things that are okay to value. It's okay to put a sense of value on currency. It's not okay to love the currency, right? But it's okay to recognize the value of it. Mm -hmm. And so, and 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 I think it's interesting because people keep misquoting and say that well, money is the root of all evil. No, it isn't. Money is not the root of all evil. Loving money is the root of all kinds of evil. Yeah. So if 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 money and treasure were evil, God wouldn't use it as an illustration. That's true. So. He's saying, it's like, yeah, you can, it's like your treasure is fine. So I imagine, like, what is, what would it be like? It's like, man, well, why would we need money in heaven? Well, probably because in heaven, people are still going to work. As we can see right now, it ain't a pleasant place to be when you're not working. And I don't care if you're broke and unemployed, and I don't care if you're rich and retired. If a person ain't working, they don't feel right. Right, yep. It's, just, you know, it's, 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 retirement's not good for the soul, man. Exactly. It just ain't. Yes. You, it's like people go into retirement, they start going batty. <laughs> yes. They want, they still, it's like, I mean, I gotta, I gotta keep my chops up, man. I gotta do something. And if I can't do what it is that I used to do, I gotta do something. It's like, you know, when people, <clears throat> you know, they become at the top of their game or something like that. And then no long, when they're no longer viable in that anymore, it's like they peaked out and, and, and it's like, man, I've, I've trained all my life to do this and I can't do it anymore. And sometimes these people are young, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, then they go into depression. It's like, man, I... I, I, I didn't I didn't achieve everything that I wanted to achieve. Oh man, w w what else is there? What's left? Yeah. You know, and 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 they they they, you know, they started to decline. You got to cling hold of God so God can renew your life, point you to Amen. something, point you to something new, give you a new purpose. Amen. You gotta serve mm -hmm. somehow. Gotta serve, and that's what heaven will be like. It's like like I said, when people are <clears throat> providing a service that they excel at, that they're good at, they're happy. Well, imagine like if you're in heaven, man, it's like, and, 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 you, and you are given the, the, the life to do what it is that you do. Because you're going be, to be serving. And that's probably one of the reasons why the fallen angels, because they didn't want to serve. They had, they had, I mean, power, you know, immense power. But they wanted to use their power for their own selfish reasons. Yeah. They, want, they were self-serving. It's like, yo, God has to be, yeah, yeah. self-serving. It's like, God, you know what? We don't want to do these things to serve your grand plan. We want to do it to serve ourselves. So maybe that could have been some, a part of the motivation behind it. But for us, you know, when you go to, it's like, man, imagine, what, what is heaven? Why would you need money? Imagine like, man, you're a business owner in heaven. It's like, what, what kind of businesses would we have? I don't know. Is there going to be clothing business? People, some people say, well, we're going to be naked in heaven like Adam and Eve. I don't know. I don't know if we are. You know? <laughs> and Jesus says we'll be clothed in righteousness. So I don't know. So there's going to be like righteous foot, you know, like righteous clothing wear or something like that. You know, who knows who, who the business <laughs> owner does with it? You know? Yes, we produce the finest, you know, uh, uh, quality control by Jesus Christ himself, the finest righteous robes uh, uh, and, and righteous linen for you to sport. Look great, you know, and, and look at that fit, you know. So who knows? There might be different businesses in heaven that are catered towards your specific interests where you'll all, they'll always have clientele in you and it's like you'll never have to worry about their business, that, that this, this business owner will never have to worry about their business going out. Or it might be a restaurant that produces food that, or, or prepares food just to your liking, just to your particular taste. It might be all kind of taste in heaven, but it's like you always know that you can come here because you're going to get the best meal every time you go to there. It's always going to be just like the first time you went because God makes all things new. Right? Yes. So this place will never go out of business because they will always have you as a clientele. And you're always going to go in there and get friendly service because it's heaven. You're always going to, you know, it's, and it's like, 
You're always going to get friendly service. You're always going to get, you know, quality food. You'll never have to worry that the food is not up to code, you know, or anything like that. And people have fear mongered them into making sure that their food is like pumped full of preservatives and, and all sorts of stuff. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, you know, or who knows what different kind of businesses that they will be. Because, and the reason why I'm saying this is because the Bible says that there's, you can store up treasures. You can store up your money bags. You have money to spend. <clears throat> you can earn money. The service that you provide will never go out of business because you'll have the heart to always provide good service, good quality, uh, uh, good quality products. I don't know. You know, just, you know, I don't think it's too far fetched to speculate on something like that because we're, all, we're probably always going to be working. We have a purpose. That's why we're alive. Amen. So our purpose don't stop once we go to heaven. Heaven ain't, 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 is not an eternal pleasure cruise. The pleasure of it is to be able to work. Be, in heaven, it's gainful employment, y'all. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be gainfully employed in heaven. You're going to enjoy what it is. Because you know, usually when people work, it's not so much that the, the work that they don't mind. They don't like who they got to work with and who they got to work for. <laughs> yeah. That's what we don't like. A lot of times yeah. what we don't like. Some people are just lazy. Yeah. They don't want to work. You know, but seriously, it's like a lot of times we go to work. We just don't want to be around the people that's working, that we got to work with. We don't like our boss. Well, in heaven, we got the best boss. <laughs> yeah. You're going to work for the best boss forever. And the people that you're going to be working around with, they love him too. And if they love him, that means they're going to love you. They're going to love you right. So we're going to be working. So we're, going to be whistling. we're going to be whistling. We're going to whistle. have that whistling song. What's that work song? <laughs> whistle you know? while you work. Whistle while you work. Every day. <laughs> you know, that's what it's going to be like. And we know that because of, of Adam and Eve. Adam, second he hit the ground. Go to work. Adam went to work. The second he the first breath he took. Work. <laughs> so it's going to be how it is going to be for us. It's work. But hey, when you're working for the Lord, man, it's, it's like a holiday. Amen. You know, yeah. it's an eternal holiday of working for the Most High God. Oof. I don't want to miss that, y'all. Amen. Zell Mental says, I like my job. It's the work that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. So if we got to, we're going to wrap, I'm going to wrap it up right there. We still, we still got some trucking to do through 12, but I'm going to wrap it up right there. Anybody got to. Uh, I know, right? We only about halfway through it now. So we could have gotten through that a lot faster than we all that rambling at you. Know. Oh, <laughs> um, just a shout out to Ida Stringer. Hey. What's up, Ida? Gary Crawford. Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, Stephen Ray says, good to see you around again. Oh, man. Oh, man. Don't give me sorry. I said, oh, man, you're going to get so started again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you caught me, man. I'm. I'm I'm glad that uh, I was able to get through the 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 uh, the feed shroud somehow. I was able to Amen. surface in your feed. Uh, so I hope y'all will keep me in your prayers that uh, you know that my work can get out there because uh, oh man, they do not want you to see me. That's true. Uh, uh, we got John Shelton and James and Christina Parrish and Michael Ryan are all commenting on your Thundercats shirt. <laughs> Ho, <laughs> Zo. <laughs> And then we've got a couple of uh, prayer requests. Okay. Aaron Campos, prayer for boss and longtime friend. Practices Germanic paganism, but he's a good man. Not godly, but needs the Lord. He is asking questions, and that's answers to earlier prayer. I'm guessing he means, um, I'm guessing Aaron means he was praying, you know, that this guy would start, this friend of his would start asking questions. So he's asking questions. Sweet. And, and now I need the words. He's a smart one, and he's a skeptic. Mm -hmm. So I guess I could use prayer too. <laughs> sure. This sure. Aaron Campos. All right. All right. Um, yeah, indeed, man. And, and and you know what? You're you're exactly where you need. And thank God, man, that you're that where you need to be, man. Because um, you know you might be the closest thing that this, this dude's ever gotten to church. Amen. Uh, like really. That's you know, right. That's one of the things I say about, uh, you know, like when I do my band, you know, 20 pound sledge, and y'all keep 20 pound sledge in your prayers also. Because for a lot of times, you know, we're out there playing, we're the closest thing that a lot of folks have gotten to church. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, yeah. that's, that's what we want to do is rock the gospel. And for you, man, that's what you're doing. You're at that job. And uh, Seed Planet, man, Seed Planet, he's asking questions, um, you know, and the Lord says that, you know, he'll bring you before, you know, the uh, leaders of the synagogue. Yes. And give you what you need to say. Yes. You know, study his word. He'll recall it to your mind. If you believe in him, if you believe in him, you're going to study his word anyway. 
So when you study his word, the Lord is going to is going to equip you for, to, for what to say. If, he, if he'll do this for the leaders of the synagogues and do it for these peoples of great authority, he'll do it for your boss. So, and, and you know, we're trusting in the Lord that he will, he will he, that because uh, the Lord backs up what he says. Yes. And, and uh, the Lord is faithful. Like I said, he signed it in blood to back up what he says. And we're trusting in you, Lord, that, you, that, uh, that, that, that your servant will be a good seed and that he will break. And, and, and hey, hey, as we can see, God uses he will use uh, pagan beliefs. Those who believe in pagans, God has a way of coming in and setting them straight based on their own beliefs. Amen. He'll come in and he'll, he, he, he can break that down and, sh and show them. It's like, look, I understand that you believe that, but let me, show you, let me show you a little something about what you believe and then let me show you what's real. Yes. God, and God, God does that. So, so, and, God has a, and, and, and God can relate. He relates it to it. Sometimes, you know, and, and sometimes even relating to these people, you know, he's got to, he's got to break them somehow. But it's a lot of times, you know, with, with pagan practices, that's what it, that's what, that's part of pagan, pagan practices is destruction. Yeah, that's true. You know, so if God has to use destruction to relate to somebody, he's going to do it. Hopefully God won't have to use it with this guy. Yeah. That, you know, that this guy is, 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 is he's finding gravity in you. He's, he's, he's taking up dialogue with you. Yeah, God he's bless you, man. Questions. He's not hardening his heart. It sounds right? like he's asking questions. Uh huh. That's good. So indeed, you know, I, I I trust in the Lord's you know success through you, and uh, Godspeed, man. Yes. Amen. Aaron, let us know. Keep us updated on your friend and how it's going. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mary and Tracy Labor. What's up? Please pray for a young widow friend of mine named Wendy. She needs a good full-time job to pay for her bills. She has been asked back for a second interview. Hallelujah. Thank you, family. Awesome. Yes, yeah. Continue. Keep those, uh, you know, keep those prayers coming. Keep that trust coming. Yes. Right? Prayer is trust, y'all. You got to trust in the Lord. Yeah. Right? Why do we pray to him? Because we trust him. Just trust in the Lord and make sure that, uh, you know, our widows are looked after. You know, yeah, pray for your widows. Is supposed to look after the widows. Exactly. A widow. If, if anybody on this earth should not have to worry, yes, it should be a widow. Amen. Right? If they if they didn't lost, you know, their spouse, you know, and and, and, and widows too, and widows too, you know. Um, but you know, as as even as, as men, you know, we got to put the concerns of uh, of the females first. You know, we we make sure that you know that our widows are taken care of, and uh, so we will pray for them. And uh, and like I said, a widow, don't don't let a widow worry, y'all. Don't let a widow worry. And uh, I pr I pray that this uh, this job will will be you know will draw will will bring this um you know this young widow uh, closer to the Lord uh, in that she sees that you know His grace uh, is is uh, is is right there for her. Yes. And that He will uh, keep her. He that He's that He's keeping her. Yes, that God is doing a work in her life. Mm -hmm. And she might, I mean, she might not want to just seek out full-time jobs. I know because of Obamacare, there's, most employers aren't hiring full-time. If she's a, you know, a, a trusting woman, trusting in God, he'll make that part-time job. And if she, you know, gives her diligence and full excellence to that job, she can turn it into a full-time job. Mm -hmm. She can be a blessing to whatever company, you know, she lands in. Because God is a fulfilling dude. Amen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so Mike P, Mike Prater, mm -hmm. he has a question. Prater! <laughs> Actually, he's got a couple of questions. That they're both interesting. Um, I was told once that both had to eat the fruit for the fall to happen because they were technically one. Mm -hmm. Strange thought, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I thought that was in What do you think, honey? Is yeah, you know what? And, have to eat? and, um... I've, I've, I've considered that myself, Mike. Um, you know, the man. This okay. This this okay. All right. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to try to tie this up. All right. So yeah, both both of them had to transgress. They they were a team. I mean, Eve was cut from Adam, and in order for this sin to be complete, um, she eats, then he eats. Now they both inherited. Now they're both sinners. And we can only produce after our own kind. So when they yeah. came together, you know, then sin is going to come down through our, it's, it's, it's just passed on. It's passed on in our DNA. 
Um, but yes, it, it's it's you would think that okay, how come God like didn't step in and say okay, Eve, you didn't eat you didn't eat the fruit. The buck stops here. It's like no, the buck stopped with Adam, and ultimately, the buck really stops with Jesus, because Jesus is the one who ends up to show up, who shows up to pay the penalty for what all of us ended up uh, ended up inheriting. So, but it's like um, in order for this um, uh, judgment to be complete, in order for you know the uh, the sanction to be complete. Both of them had to eat from the fruit. It's like, Adam, it's like, you're the man. You're the man, and you didn't put a stop to this. And now you're not only are you putting a stop to this, you're partaking in this. And now both of you, both of you are guilty. But what, what, would, it have, what, what would it have looked like if, um, if only Eve would have eaten the fruit? What if, what if Adam never ate it? Um, well... If Eve would have transgressed and she was the only one to eat the fruit, well, Adam would have stayed immortal and Eve would have just kept getting older. And Eve would have eventually died. Ugh. And so now, which would mean that Adam would have to be issued another wife? Now this, now one could, oh, this, no. <laughs> this opens up, okay, well maybe that's what happened with Lilith. Maybe it's just like, no, no, in other, in other uh, writings, you know, that, that, that wasn't the case. Lilith, Lilith basically jumped on out for the same reason that Lucifer jumped on out. Wanted to be, she wanted to be her own girl. Lucifer wanted to be his own. Wait, you ain't saying Lilith Look. is real, are you? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I'm saying, I'm saying according to the, according to the, uh, 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 uh extra biblical writings. Okay. Um. No, Lilith was not real, <laughs> but now, but that's um, what I'm saying is that that kind of suggestion that I'm making or this this speculation that I'm making invites uh, uh, um, the conversation about Lilith. Oh, gotcha. Maybe okay. I just invited her myself. I don't know. <laughs> Lilith, get out of my house. You took that wrong. <laughs> get out of my house, Lilith. But no, okay. Well, I mean, because fortunately, all we have is speculation. We can speculate on that, and fortunately, that's not actually what happened. But yeah, it's like if Eve only ate the fruit. Uh, but Adam didn't. Well, then Eve, she would have been, um, well, put out of the garden. But the thing is, that's not how it went down. Evidently, that's not how it could have gone down. I don't know. Um, God knows. God knows how the whole thing was going to go out. Once it says like, that's why he's like, don't eat. Don't eat from that tree because I know what's going to happen. I'm trying to tell you don't do it. So God already knew that, well, if Eve eats from it, Adam's going to eat from it, death is going to enter through them, and then we're going to have this whole thing. So God already knew the, the probability. It wasn't like Eve was going to eat and Adam was going to be like, oh, you, you dumb. I ain't eating none of that. What's wrong with you? Adam, God knew that Adam was going to eat too. And um, so, but yeah, if, if, if Eve was just to eat it and Adam didn't, then she would have grown old and she would have died. And who knows? Maybe... Uh, well, I don't know because Adam sold her out like really quick. It's like the second like God showed us, like, oh, she did it. It's her fault and it's your fault for making me. So I was like, <laughs> I was possibly thinking that, well, maybe Adam, you know, maybe he was like really in love with her or something like that. And if he would have saw that she was growing old, um, well, maybe he probably would have ate the fruit too. So she wouldn't have to grow old alone, mm. you know, but that would be suicide. Yeah. There, um, so as, as I've said before, Adam and Eve were basically the first suicidal couple. And, nice. um, but would Adam doing that, what would be the redeeming value of Adam doing that? Oh, um, I see you're growing old and I don't want to grow old alone and I don't want you to grow old alone. So I'm going to eat this fruit. So that's, that would be suicide, but not really, not really much redeeming value to it. Uh, and by doing that, they would most assuredly separate themselves from God. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm hoping I'm answering your question or, or at least getting like towards uh, the, the speculation that you're talking about. Cause like I said, this can go off in a whole bunch of different places. Yeah, Gary Crawford pointed out that God asked Adam, he basically Adam was the one he wanted to be accountable. Mm -hmm. He asked Adam, where are you? Yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's, a, it's like the sa Satan, the Satan went to Eve, <laughs> messed up the relationship. And then God goes to Adam and says, dude, why did you let this, you know, it's like he, he knows what's going on. Yeah. You know, it was like, dude, you know, why did you let this happen? It's like you stood there and you watched this whole thing.
He stood there and didn't do nothing. And people would be like, well, didn't God just stand there and watch the whole thing? God's got to let free will play out. And maybe that's what Adam was doing. Maybe he was letting Eve's free will play out. And uh, regardless of which, I think it comes down to this instance, right? This, this bottom line right here. It's like, well, there's free will and there's God's will. Mm, and yeah. God's will is the best will. Amen. <laughs> and what are we supposed to do with our free will? My free will choice is to as best I can let God's will, you know, God's will is going to be done anyway. Yeah. I just I just want to have the uh the constitution be able to be on board with it. You know, I don't want to be one of those people, well, you know, I want to do things my way. It's like, no, man, I want to do things God's way. I see things doing our way it messes things up really bad. Yes, it does. And so I want to take my free will choice and choose freely to say, "Hey, I'm down with what God, I'm down with his plan. Yes, amen. All right. Just a couple more fun <laughs> questions. <laughs> I know I always say that. But, um, so Mike P. wants, Prater wants to know again, um, it's kind of just a fun question. Mm. What about maybe giants building the pyramids? What do uh, you think about that? Let's see, giants building, well, is there, um, I, I, I admittedly my my Egyptology is not that extensive. Uh, I don't I'm I'm not familiar with um, records of like a like really like solid records of of giants building the pyramids. And I tell you what, man, um, when I was I'm not trying to solicit my story, y'all. I'm not. I'm just. But since you brought it, but since you brought it up, and I'm glad that you did. Um, when I was first starting, um, the flood chronicles, uh, when I, when I wrote the story, that was one of the things I was exploring with first. And I hope you guys check it out. It's at my website, the flood chronicles, uh, roots of the curse, you know, uh, check it out. I hope you like it. It's sci-fi from a, a biblical perspective. Um, but yeah, in, in, in putting that together, uh, when I was studying the story of Noah and I'm trying to find out the timeline of like when pyramids were built and when they could have been built and could they have, could they have been built before the flood and, and have survived that and all that sort of stuff. And then, you know, and of course I had to, you know, I was corrected about a lot of things when digging in my research and finding out the timelines and stuff like that. But that was part of the research and, you know, and the trials and errors of my research. But one of the uh, uh, speculations was, was could the, um, would, were there giants when it talks about um, the sons of God and, and people, a lot of people believe that the sons of God were, were, were giants. And the Bible doesn't say that. The book of Enoch implies it or says it, but the Bible doesn't. So I don't believe the book of Enoch. I don't believe the Apocrypha. I believe the word of God. But, the, it's, uh, but one of the things when, trying, when I was trying to get a lid on what the Nephilim were, it's like, well, were they giants? And wait a minute, could these giants have been the ones who built the pyramids? Did they, were they building them maybe to try to survive? The flood and things like that. So I was coming up with all these things to try to, you know, get a solid basis for my story. And, um, and you know, in, in different ways that they could have built the pyramids. Well, were they, since they were sons of God, did they have like, uh, um, uh, what's that, Telekine te telekinetic powers? Did they move these heavy stones by telekinesis and whatnot? So I was going all over the place, man, with trying to, you know, build a basis for my story. Um a little bit of a spoiler, pyramids are not in my story now. It's after I've done all the research, they're, they're not in it. Um, but in terms of um, uh, giants building the pyramids, um, can I, I'll offer this, man. I'll offer this. I do not believe that giants were employed to build the pyramids. And the reason why I say this is because when I reflect on the Tower of Babel. Oh, yeah. When I reflect on the Tower of Babel, it wasn't giants building this tower. It was people. It was people trying to make a name for themselves. And God himself, remember, he brings his poppy, he, he brings his posse. He says, yo, let's go down and let us, let us go down. And because of what mankind was doing. And says, man, we got to stop this. Because if they got this kind of communication with each other, nothing will be impossible for them. Nothing, nothing will be impossible. So that's, that's a lot of confidence that God himself places in us. So that being said, according to the Bible, I don't think we have to assume that it was giants or something like that or aliens or anything like that. No, it was humans. We're, in, we're capable of amazing things. Wondrous things mankind is, is capable of. God says it himself. We're capable of incredible stuff. Yeah. 
So, I mean, even Jesus, he comes in and says, yeah, greater things than I, you will do. Jesus says this. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's a stretch to say that even though we haven't figured out how the pyramids were, you know, um, um, built, I don't think we have to assume that it was by some other, um, you know, uh, humanoid or extraterrestrial or uh, giants or anything like that, I, if that makes sense. Yeah. And Shane Howard says he started your book and it's great so far. Just a shout ah, out, honey. <laughs> God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, sorry, my phone is... Uh, Ooh, this is the longest we've ever gone. i got to get my I, cheeseburger made. That Colombo coming up. I know, but Ida Harriet has a really interesting <laughs> question. It could go long, but we'll make this the last one. Um, hey, don't get me wrong. It's not because I, cause I'm, I'm figuring you know, on the East Coast, it's probably getting a little late and some of y'all are hungry and stuff like that. I'm just trying to be polite, all right? I'm just trying to be polite. <laughs> okay, Ida Harriet, that's the last question, honey. <laughs> Adam and Eve's children were cursed to ultimately be forgotten, like Moses' mm. children. Mm. Whatever became of descendants of some of the Bible's great patriarchs? And we were just kind of reading in that in um, Genesis, you know, like um, we were kind of counting out from from... Adam and Eve's children to mm. all the way to Lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's a great question. Great question. Um, I would say that we have, I, I would reckon we need to consider what the purpose of the Bible is. The Bible is one, we, we got the Old Testament. The purpose of the Old Testament is to paint the picture of that dude, Jesus Christ. So we know who he is when he shows up. We don't have much of an excuse to not know who Jesus is, who Jesus is when he shows up. So the Bible is really going to point to the um, the genealogies that are going to yield the Messiah and the genealogies that have something to do with with kind of like establishing a perimeter to 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 uh, kind of gerrymander him, his 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 dissension all the way down to when we get to uh, um, Joseph. Right. So we, we got it to Mary and Joseph. We got to get it to right there. If we have these um, genealogies that, you know, kind of seem to disappear is because that was the role that that genealogy needed to play to kind of help to direct uh, mm -hmm. uh, the dissension of Jesus Christ through this genealogy. And uh, other than that, the ones that you'll see that kind of like stay all, all the way around is because they're needed in terms of bringing uh, Jesus Christ all the way down this line. If there are some that are, are left out of the lines because, like I said, they probably fulfilled their role in terms of uh, what tribes uh, and, and uh, or what these, these uh, peripheral tribes. And then you got these main lines that kind of, you know, funnel Jesus into uh, basically into his, his, his birth. Yeah, Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It does to me. <clears throat> right. I hope that makes sense. Okay, honey, you get, people are talking about food now, so... Uh-huh, see? <laughs> you want to talk about food, too. All right. All right. God bless y'all. I hope you had a, a fantastic time, and uh, we will see y'all on uh, Thursday. Thursday. All right. Have a blessed week, y'all.